Thanks very much, Conference. It's fantastic to be back here in Liverpool, a city of great passion and energy. Um, although there was an odd moment on Sunday afternoon as my team Arsenal were beating Everton, and I got smiles from one side and scowls uh, from the other. But passion and energy in, in lumps here. Uh, and talking of passion and energy, can I just begin by thanking my fantastic shadow Brexit team? Jenny Chapman, Paul Blomfield and Matt Pennicook, who have been the shadow ministers doing fantastic work. Emma Hardy, Jess Morden and Diane Hayter leading for us in the Lords, along with Angela Smith, our leader in the Lords. Thank you all for the work that you've done for us in these difficult times. Conference, can I also thank a very special group of colleagues with us, and that's our Labour MEPs. These last two years have been especially difficult for you, but you've led our party in Europe and acted for our country in Europe, and we owe you a, a debt of gratitude. Thank you to all of our MPs, present and past. The conference, the last two years has not been easy. Like many of you, I was devastated by the result of the referendum. Like many of you, I had campaigned and voted to remain. Not, not for the technical benefits of membership, important though they are, but because I'm proud to say I'm an internationalist. I believe that nations achieve more together than they do alone. I believe that the challenges facing our nation, whether that's conflict, terrorism, climate change, those challenges are best met together with our AU partners. And conference, if we think of the opportunities facing our nation, scientific research, medical developments, education, art and culture, those opportunities are going to be realised best with our EU partners. And conference, those values of collaboration and cooperation, they didn't die on the 23rd of June 2016, and they must guide everything that we do as we go through the Brexit process, because we cannot give in to the narrow ideology that is driving the Tory approach to Brexit. <laughs> and conference, that's why we did not duck the challenge of Brexit. It would have been easy to wish away the result, but we didn't. We stepped up, we stood together, and we fought the government tooth and nail. And conference, we were right to do that. We were right to say jobs and the economy must come first. We were right to say that EU citizens are not bargaining chips. We were right to say there's going to need to be a transition period so we don't go off a cliff. And we were right to say we need a customs union with the EU to protect our manufacturing base and to keep the solemn commitment to no hard border in Northern Ireland. And we were right to argue for a single market deal to go with that customs union. And we were absolutely right, absolutely right to insist that Parliament has a meaningful vote on the Article 50 deal that the Prime Minister seeks to bring back. And I'm glad we stepped up to those challenges. The conference, we're about to be tested again. Over the next few weeks and months, 
hugely important decisions are going to be made that are going to affect each and every one of us. And what does the Prime Minister say? Even in the aftermath of Salzburg, she says, trust me on Brexit. Trust her on Brexit. Trust the Prime Minister whose first choice as Foreign Secretary was Boris Johnson. Her second choice was the man who's been running down the NHS for the past few years. And conference, this Prime Minister is responsible for the hostile environment. This Prime Minister... This Prime Minister appointed a Secretary of State for Northern Ireland who doesn't understand the basics about Northern Ireland let alone the complexities. So, conference, this Prime Minister does not deserve our trust. Just when we need strong government, strong leadership, what have we got? Division, chaos, failure. The government has no credible plan for Brexit weeks out from the deadline. No credible solution for Northern Ireland weeks out from the deadline. And it's blindingly obvious that there's no majority for checkers. The Prime Minister must have been the only person surprised last week that checkers was not going to be accepted either in Europe or by our own party. For conference, what has happened is that the Tory civil war on Europe that's been going on for years now risks our prosperity. The party, do you remember, that promised to fix the roof whilst the sun was shining, is now intent on burning the house down. So, conference, I've got a message for the Prime Minister. If your party wants to tear itself apart, that's fine. But you're not taking our country with you. And conference, that is why Labour set six tests for Brexit. Not just technical tests, but tests that set out the sort of country, the sort of society that we want, where the well-being of all our communities matter. Those tests weren't plucked from thin air. They were taken from promises and commitments that the government made about what it would achieve in these negotiations. The Prime Minister's response to the test was that she was determined to meet them. Determined to meet them. Well, things may be going hopelessly wrong for her. She may have lowered her expectations, but I'm not lowering mine. And conference, I know you want to know, our members want to know where we stand on our tests going in to this important vote in the autumn. Some say we may vote for the deal that the Prime Minister brings back, maybe abstain, maybe vote for a vague deal. So let me be absolutely clear. If the Prime Minister returns with a deal that does not meet our tests, and that looks increasingly likely, we will vote against her deal. <laughs> and conference, if the Prime Minister thinks that she can come back with a vague deal, asking us to leap blindfold into the unknown, we will vote that down. Conference. We didn't set tests that could be met by refusing to answer the question. A vague or blind Brexit is a leap to nowhere, and we'll have no part of it. Now, conference. Let's be clear. This is not 
about frustrating the process. It is about stopping a destructive Tory Brexit. It is about fighting for our values and it is about fighting for our country. And conference, when it comes to that vote in Parliament, we do not accept, we do not accept that the choice is between whatever the Prime Minister manages to cobble together or no deal. That is not a meaningful vote. Between really bad and even worse, no deal will be a catastrophe. And no government has the right to plunge our country into chaos because of their own failures. So if Parliament votes down the Prime Minister's deal, or she can't reach a deal, that is not the end of the debate. And Labour must step up again and shape what happens next. Our preference our preference is clear. We want a general election to sweep away this failed government. <laughs> and conference. Having swept them away, we want to install a radical Labour government capable of transforming this country. And that's what should happen after two years of negotiations ending in failure. But if that's not possible, we must have other options. And conference, that must include campaigning for a public vote. <laughs> conference, it's right that Parliament has the first say. It's right that Parliament has the first say. But if we need to break the impasse, our options must include campaigning for a public vote, and nobody is ruling out Remain as an option. <laughs> and conference. And conference. Thank you, conference. And can I? That, that's why, that's why. I am very pleased that we as a party can put our full weight behind this, this morning's motion, which will be moved by the GMB. And can I just thank all of the delegates, the hundreds of delegates, who sweated it out with us on Sunday night for nearly six hours to get a motion that we could put forward. Um, conference, you know and our members know that there are differences of opinion on Brexit. But what happened in that session is we reached a consensus. We were able to put a united position before conference today. And conference, just to fast forward a week to contrast the position when we vote on our motion, our consensus motion, in a united Labour Party way. Fast forward to the chaos you're likely to see at the Tory party conference where they weren't able to agree anything at all. Now, <laughs> conference, you will appreciate that all of us in the room on Sunday evening missed the last episode, episode of The Bodyguard. <laughs> there, are nearly there are nearly 300 people walking around not wanting to know what happened. So, if you watched it, please don't tell us what happened. We haven't caught up yet. And Conference One, final but important point. 
whatever the deal the Prime Minister does or doesn't bring back, that's only part of the debate. The referendum was not just about technical membership of the EU. It was much wider and much deeper than that. It became a vote on the state of the nation. It became a vote on economics and politics and how they work, or in many cases, don't work. And millions of people sent us a very clear message that we must transform our economy, rebuild our public services, tackle inequality wherever it is, and give power back to our communities. There can be no satisfactory response to the referendum unless we have the right relationship with the EU, but also the right deal for Britain. <laughs> Conference, I'm under no illusion about the challenge ahead. We're going through uncertain times, and Brexit has divided the country. But we must remain united in the fight for our values, values that hold our party together and values which I think could bring the country back together. That is our challenge and we must rise to it. Thank you, Conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.